Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is going on third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 19. So I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. If not, don't worry. Just look below or somewhere around this video. There should be a link. That link will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in the third grade Math FSA Boot Camp Series. So go ahead, pause the video. I want you to solve number one and number two on your own. And then you're gonna come on back to check your work. Make sure you throw it on your best, okay? All right, go. Welcome back third graders. All right, now before we even get started, let's go ahead and identify the question type. I'm seeing keywords like select all. I'm seeing A, B, C, D, E. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's a multi-select question, meaning that there's probably gonna be more than one correct answer. Now that we know what question type it is, let's go ahead and read it and break it down. And remember that you are checking your work as you go. If there's anything that I do on my paper that you're like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. I should probably take that and use it because it could help me learn and grow, then do that. All right, the line plot shown displays the lengths of snakes at a local zoo. Okay, so here's the line plot right down there and length of snake. So each one of these X's equals a snake. So I'm gonna put a X right there because each X is a different snake. So if we look at this, we've got snakes at a local zoo. We've got their length in feet. We've got one foot, two feet, three feet, and four feet, but there's some spread out in between the whole numbers, and that's where our fractions come in. Now let's go ahead and read the answer choices, and we're probably gonna have to go back up here and fill in our mixed numbers. Okay, select all the statements that correctly describe the data. Data is a fancy word for information in the line plot above. So which one of these are correct? That's what we're looking for. Okay exactly four that's a number right there four snakes are less than three feet long okay so where is three feet boom okay here is three feet and it says exactly four are less than that that means anything this way would be less than that so it can't be on the three, but I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven snakes are less than three feet long. So is it four? No, it's seven snakes. So what can we do with choice A? Eliminate. All right, B says two. Two snakes are greater than three feet. 
here's three feet. So if we're going greater, it's going to be this way. Well, I'm only seeing one snake that is greater than three feet, right? Do you see another snake? No. So only one snake. Therefore, what can we do with choice B? Eliminate. Three snakes are exactly... <laughs> so what I'm noticing here is there's a typo. I'm gonna fix it here and I'll make sure that I upload the correct copy for you. It should be three snakes are exactly two and two fourths feet long. So just forget about that part. I'll make sure I clean up your copy, okay, before I release this video. So three snakes are exactly two and two fourths feet long. Sorry about that. So what we need to do is find out where two and two fourths is. Well, here's two. And then if we're going to go two fourths, that should be this four right here represents the number of jumps between each hole. Let's see if that's correct. Here's two. I'm going to the next hole number, which is three. Let's see if it takes four jumps. Ready? One, two, three, four. It does. So this would be two and one fourth. The next one would be two and two fourths, two and three fourths, and then we have three. So are there three snakes that are exactly two and two fourths? Well, here's two and then Two fourths would be one, two, three snakes. So is that correct? It is. Yeah, the typo is not correct, but actually what I was trying to get across to you is correct. So let's go ahead and bubble and see. But we're not finished, y'all. We need to make sure we go ahead and check the next ones too. All right, one snake is two fourths foot. Another typo. This should say foot. I'll fix that as well. I'm so sorry. <laughs> One snake is, so just one snake is two fourths of a foot long. Let's find out where two fourths would be. So here's one hole. Two fourths would be less than a hole and there's nothing there that's less than a hole. So we can eliminate that one. And nine snakes are represented in the line plot. Is that true? Let's count up the number of X's. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Are there nine snakes? Yes, there are. Okay, so sorry again for the typos. I'll make sure that I clean that up for you before you work on this. If you happen to see the typos too, it's because your teacher printed it out before I had the chance to fix it. But before I release the video, and I'm sorry about that, but you guys can go ahead and fix it too. Thank you for your patience. Um, choice C and E are the correct answers here. Let's look at number two. All right, first things first, let's look at the question type. I see a grid over here. So the answer is going to be a gridded response. And it looks like we're gonna have to do some measuring. Oh boy. Okay, what is the measure of the pencil, this guy, below to the nearest quarter inch? So the nearest quarter inch would be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and two fourths. Oh, I gotta be careful not to get that in there. Two fourths would also be known as one half. Okay. Um, let's take a look at it. So we've got our pencil starting right here at the zero. That looks good. And the tip looks like it's going to exactly right there. So maybe even a little bit past it. That's okay. Because again, we're going to the nearest. So the nearest one would be this guy right here. We need to figure out what the measure of this location is on a ruler. And the cool thing about rulers when you're measuring in inches to the nearest quarter inches, it, it's kind of like using a number line. So here we know it's going to be three and a little bit. So three is our whole number. Three and, let's see how many jumps. There's one, two, three, four jumps. That means our denominator is four. And we went one jump from the hole, so that would be three and one fourth. But there's a problem because what can we not put into our grid? Yeah, we cannot put a mixed number. If we've tried to write this in, it might look like this, 31 fraction bar four, and that is 31 fourths totally different than three and one fourths. So we cannot, absolutely cannot put a mixed number. No, mixed numbers. That's not a hashtag sign, that's a number sign. 
It is a hashtag assigned to. You're right. You're right. Cannot put those into the gridded response. We have to change them or convert them into a fraction greater than one. So to do that, we can start at the zero. We know that our fraction is going to be fourths. So we'll just count the number of fourths it takes to get there. Okay. So we've got starting at the zero, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, nine fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, 12 fourths, 13 fourths. 13 fourths is what that looks like. To place that into our gridded response, it would look like this. Totally different. I know it looked like we've got the same digits and they're flipped around, but that doesn't matter. This is 31 fourths. This is 13 fourths. Be very, very careful. Also, if you've been watching these videos for a little bit, you know that with the gridded response, I like to start from the left side and go over, but your teacher might have encouraged you this whole year or prefers that you start from the right and move over. Whatever they say, you follow your teacher's guide, okay? Whatever your teacher says, I want you to follow their lead with this, okay? Don't say, but Miss McCarthy said da 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 Whatever your teacher says here, I want you to follow that. I'm gonna bubble mine in though because it would not be right. I've done all this work for this problem and if I don't bubble it in, it's gonna be marked wrong even though I have the correct answer up top. The computer is going to scan the bubbles and if I don't bubble it in, it's gonna be wrong. Also, I need to make sure that I'm using number two pencil number two pencil and not a pen pen just happens to show up better on camera but i want you make sure that you're using a number two pencil cool all right now you might need some more help with line plots or measuring to the nearest quarter or half of an inch so i would love to point you in the direction of some more practice let's do that now <laughs> Okie dokie artichokey. So if you know that you need some more help with line plots, with measuring, with representing data, I want you to check out the link below for McCarthy Math 155. You want to play, play? You want to pay close attention. You do want to play, but you want to pay close attention to unit nine, which will go over the same types of skills we worked on in today's episode. Now, in order to access the videos, you do have to be a member, but everybody gets a seven day free trial. So if this is something that you really know that you need help with, check it out for seven days for free. All you need is your email and your name. You just fill out a simple form. If you have any issues getting your free trial, email me. I'll help you out. So many teachers and parents and schools and districts even are, as soon as they find McCarthy Math 155, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the program that I could only dream about and I didn't even know it existed. Like, People are so stoked about this program and that makes my heart so happy because here's the deal. I created McCarthy Math 155 because it's what I wanted and needed in the classroom as a teacher. They're fun, they're engaging. As teachers, we often have to move on to the next unit, but we know that we have kids who can totally get it if we just gave them the chance. Well, this is the chance. So I hope that you check out this program. I hope you fall in love with it. I know a lot of teachers out there are super grateful that they found it and that makes my heart so happy. The next link that I'd like you to pay attention to is to the How to Pass the Math FSA series for the same standard that we worked on today. I've linked it below or the link might be somewhere around this video to the playlist for it, but check it out. Now just keep in mind that I created this back when the FSA was a computer-based test for third grade and now it's a paper-based test. So the problems, they look a little bit different because we're not gonna be doing the test on a computer this year. It's excellent practice and I hope that you use it if you know that you need more help. I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course you can subscribe here on YouTube. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And while you're at it, if you are watching from YouTube, if you could take a quick millisecond to smash that like button, that would be super duper awesome. Not for me or because it makes me feel good, even though it does make me feel good, but more importantly for my mission. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many things third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. I'm trying to reach as many students as I can because it breaks my heart when I see students struggling with math. I know that they can do it and I wanna make sure that they're getting the help that they deserve, helping your teachers to get the help that y'all deserve. So please hit that like button and just know that when you do that, you are most definitely transforming somebody's life. Thank you so much for that. There's the dog. Have you, did you guys hear the dog in the other episode? The dog is barking again. I don't know, it's like a puppy or something, but 
every time I start to record, the dog just wants to bark and bark and bark. It is what it is. All right. <laughs> and finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers, that's you, who are about to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice, so choose kindness y'all. And I will see you all on the next episode. I wonder if the dog will still be barking in that one, we'll see. Bye guys.